I know I'm not the only one who had a crappy childhood, so in this video, I wanna share with you my journey of trying to forgive my alcoholic mom. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health and I do my best to try to help you to improve your mental health. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So I have a ton of new subscribers. There have been a lot of topics that have come up lately and I think this video will summarize a lot of what people have been asking, what people need help with and all of that. And a lot of you are gonna get to know me a little bit better, but there's there's a lot going on. Um, so I've made some videos about how your childhood can affect uh, who you become as an adult, um, using that as a reason, but not as an excuse. Two of the big things that are important to me and my mental health are forgiveness and empathy. And these are things that took me a very long time to figure out. And it's, it's really hard to tell people who are just meeting me that I used to be the angriest person that you would ever meet. I was just constantly and perpetually angry. And a lot of that had to do with my depression, my anxiety, my childhood, and everything. But anyways, let me, let me share with you this story. It's gonna be kinda long, but if you are somebody who had a bad childhood, a rough childhood, I hope this video gives you some hope. I hope it helps you heal. I hope it gives you some suggestions. Um, so anyways, I'm the child of an alcoholic mom, all right? Spoiler alert, for those of you who don't know, my mom was just in a video I did, like, yesterday, I think. Um, she's coming up on 13 years sober, all right? So I just wanted to get that out of the way. <laughs> but anyways, growing up, um, my parents divorced when I was about four years old. Um, we lived in Fresno, California. They got divorced not long after I moved in with my dad. And he was my primary parent. And I would go visit my mom on the holidays. Something that just came to mind is that for many, many, many years, and even to this day, I'm not sure, but for many years, the way I had that story in my head was I was living with my mom, she sent me to go visit my dad, and then she just didn't want me back, and I just stayed with my dad. So if you if you imagine that as a five-year-old child, like that's something that gets printed in your brain, and something that's come up in my videos recently is trust issues. So like, it's important to go through this process and realize like where these things are coming from. So anyways, it wasn't long after that when my mom started drinking heavily. Um, so I would go and visit her during the holidays, so we're talking about Thanksgiving and Christmas, and uh, she met my stepdad not too long after, they're no longer together. Um, that's a whole different story, but yeah, I just remember going down there and every time I would go to visit, she was just, insanely drunk and my mom was the type of drunk where she was homicidal or suicidal like she was threatening to stab or kill somebody else she's this feisty little sicilian woman or there were times when i was like seven eight years old and i remember my mom like locking herself in the bathroom threatening to kill herself and like it, that's rough that's rough as a child i remember um you know Thanksgivings or Christmas Eve, I just remember my mom getting blackout drunk. Like these are supposed to be this family time of the year and my stepdad having to carry my mom's unconscious drunk self to the car as we drive home. And I remember just sitting in the back of the car just thinking about how much I just hated my life and I hated everything. I always was just like, why can't I just have a normal childhood? And there were periods of my life, like as I got older when I became like I don't know, middle school, high school age, there were times where I just I just didn't wanna visit my mom anymore. I just didn't wanna go out there. I just didn't understand why she couldn't love me or why she couldn't uh, stop drinking because of me. Like, doesn't she care about me enough to just quit? And I, got, I would get fed up with it and I just wouldn't go visit her. Um, I remember somewhere around high school, there was like a year or two where I just went without even talking to her. Like, I just had so much anger and resentment towards her. Like, I did not understand why this woman could not quit for me, you know? And I got, I got older and because my mom was an alcoholic, I swore that I was never gonna drink or use drugs. And at the end of my senior year, that's when I got drunk for the first time because of a breakup. And, um, you know, I thought I was gonna marry this girl and all sorts of stuff, and I just didn't wanna feel anything. I, I never knew how to handle my emotions. Um, I was always anxious or depressed or angry. And the first time I drank, I was like, oh, okay, like this gets rid of everything. And that's what started my addiction. 
So I have a ton of other videos. Like I just want to kind of give you like a, a brief little history of what my life was like before I started drinking. Um, and real quick, I'm gonna pause right there. I think it's important to understand two things. Statistically, children of alcoholics or addicts, uh, well, let me put it this way. People who have addicts or alcoholics as their caregiver, they have an 80% chance of becoming an alcoholic or an addict because of their environment. There's also a 50% genetic factor in there. So like, I, oft, I do a course like at the treatment centers I work at and like, I, I go through the risk factors and like you can add all these things up and like I was screwed from the get go of becoming an alcoholic or an addict. But I do want you to have a little empathy for those of you who don't struggle with addiction or anything like, I just want you to know, again, it's a reason but not an excuse. A lot of the people who have addictions had some kind of really bad childhood. So there, there's a story that I don't tell often and those of you who understand or know about 12 step programs, it'll make sense to you. But when I was in like, in deep into my alcoholism was when my mom got sober. And she she wanted to come visit me in Las Vegas. And I lived in a little two bedroom apartment with my roommate and my mom wanted to come visit me, which I thought was weird. I'm like, uh, okay. And her being sober just didn't really click for me, right? So she came and visited me and like, I remember she stayed at a hotel here in Vegas, not far from our apartment. And she came by the apartment and like she came in and there was just alcohol bottles everywhere and beer cans everywhere. And her heart must have been breaking you know, seeing where I was at. And the morning that she was leaving to go back to California, she asked if we can have breakfast. So of course I'm like, okay, let's go to this, uh this uh, bar across the street from my house, because here in Las Vegas are 24 hours and they have cooks 24 hours. So we went at like six or seven in the morning and we go there, you know, because of the omelets are really good. And like, I was, I was drunk, I was already drunk. And my mom sat down and she apologized to me. She apologized to me for everything she's done and you know, my childhood and her being an alcoholic and everything. And I'm just like, whatever. Cause to me, that's something that she always said. She always said that. Like she would be drunk when I was a kid and apologize to me. So I'm just like, whatever. Um, later on, I found out she was doing her ninth step with me. All right, she was making an amends with me. And that's really interesting you know, someone making their ninth step to their son who is getting drunk at like seven in the morning at a bar. Really weird stuff. So when my son was born a few years later, my mom was still sober and she came out to visit. And like, I don't know, I just remember there was this change in her, right? She had this kind of glow. She kind of had this happiness and peace and serenity. It was like, it was like this mom that I hadn't met before. Um, but I still had all of my issues with her, like, you don't just let go of 20 years of your life and pretty much hating your mom, right? So years after that, after my life spiraled out of control, my mom's actually the person who saved my life. I'm gonna be linking a bunch of videos in the info card where I've talked a little bit more in depth about certain sections of my story. I also wrote a book, like shameless plug, but I wrote a book, it's like $5 on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. It It's pretty much my story of addiction and recovery. So if you want all the deeds, like go ahead and check out the book or go to my website and you can get a free copy. Anyways, <laughs> back to the story. So my mom ended up um, saving my life and I got sober. And I was so mad at her. Um, I remember when they had an intervention and I was just screaming and cussing at her. Just, this is your fault. It's your fault, I'm the way I am. And I called her all sorts of names that you should never call anybody, you know, especially your own mother, right? And all of this, and you know, she helped me get sober. And I went into sober living for a few months and then I ended up moving with my mom. And I was just so angry. I was constantly fighting with her, constantly. I just had so much anger. And I remember calling people and calling my sponsor and just being like, I don't know why I'm so angry, right? Like all the time. So now we're gonna get to this kind of healing process. So one of the things that, I learned is just to let go, all right? And forgiveness is a huge part of that. Something I always teach my clients, and it's because it was a huge lesson to me, like forgiveness, I think, I think in our brains, and part of it's our ego, we feel that forgiveness is letting the person off the hook for every terrible thing they've done. I don't think about, about it like that. Forgiveness is letting me off the hook. It's letting me and myself. The sooner I can forgive somebody, whether it's my mother or the person who cut me off on the freeway, the sooner I forgive them and let go, I can move on with the rest of my day or the rest of my life even. So that's something that I learned. Now, one thing that broke my heart, so my son was three years old when I got sober. And this is where empathy comes in. And I saw, I saw people in my mom's life 
that were just treating her like garbage, right? Like, you know, we all get so wrapped up in our own stuff and I had so much anger towards my mom, but I remember just seeing people talk smack to my mom and my mom was seven years sober at this time and people were still, people were still giving her crap about what she did in her addiction. I'm sitting there like, wow, like I want people to forgive me for all the terrible stuff I did in my addiction why, why can't I do that for my own mom? So that kind of helped me, like I, I empathize with her, maybe I sympathize with her, you know? But like, I knew that I didn't want to be treated like that. So I, that was part of it, which really kind of like, I was like, you know what, maybe I need to start calming down a little bit. Now, here's the most transformative part. I, I learned through the program that I worked to get sober to to write things down, break things down, look at my fears and everything. And basically what I what I found was like, okay, so look at me. I'm an I was an alcoholic, a drug addict and stuff. Why did that happen? Because of my childhood, right? And I blamed my mom. Well, I had to look at my mom's past, okay? And this is this is something I would ask all of you if you have problems with your parents, like, look at their past, look at their childhood. Can you empathize? So I already asked my mom like a couple weeks ago when I was starting to plan to make this video. I was like, do you care? Do you care if I'm completely open and honest? She's like, I don't give a crap, right? <laughs> so my mom's awesome. But so let me put myself in my mom's shoes real quick. So my mom grew up in a time where there was still a lot of racism. Okay, um, the 50s, the 60s and all that. And those of you who don't know, surprise, I am half African American. Yep, that's right, my father is black. So my mom, she, <laughs> as long as I can remember, my mom is just attracted to African American men, you know? And yes, I know all of the jokes that come along with that. But <laughs> my mom is attracted to African American men. But anyways, back to the serious note. Imagine a young white woman growing up in um, an area where this stuff isn't really accepted and my mom is only dating black men. My mom got bullied, picked on, beat up. My mom has two fake front teeth, right? And just so you know, like my mom ain't no punk. Like my mom wasn't just getting whooped on. Like my mom was a scrapper. So she fought, she beat some butt too. But like my mom was beaten for who she was attracted to. Like that stuff is insane to me, right? My mom was beaten by people at her school. They called her an inward lover and all this. Like this is what my mom dealt with in her childhood. Then going home, my mom is Sicilian. My grandpa is Sicilian. My grandpa is way more accepting now, but back then, um, you know, it wasn't okay for my mom to date African American men. My my mom was beat by my uh, by my grandpa. Like I remember my mom telling me stories. They were like beat with a hose. My mom would like step up to my grandpa when like he was gonna hit her twin sister or her other siblings. Like my mom was getting in between that. So like I'm sitting there and I have to look at this. Like look at the childhood my mom had. Right. Then later on, I mentioned this a long time ago in a video, but I'm actually supposed to have a brother who's a year older than me, okay? But my mom, um, her and my father's first child, he died just a few days after he was born, all right? So like, after that, my mom had a lot of trauma and panic attacks and so much stuff going on. So like, when you start to compound all of this stuff that happened through my mom's life, like I look at it, I'm like, no wonder why she turned to alcohol. Like, no wonder, you know what I mean? And again, it's a reason, but it's not an excuse. But my mom did what so many people can't do, which is get sober, and then she helped save my life. So like, this is what helped me heal and process this stuff, is that I realized like, you know, not everything is about me. Like, yes, I can sit there and think about my rough childhood, this and this and this, but, when I can step back and say, okay, well, her childhood was rough and maybe that's what turned her into the person that she became, that helped me forgive her. And today, and you know, I'm not even gonna jump to today. I will say this. I lived with my mom for a while before I moved back to Las Vegas and I remember this. And I, I just think this is an important part of the story. I remember everything was going great for me. I moved back to Las Vegas. I got a job. I got a beautiful um, girlfriend who I felt was way out of my league. I had money in my pocket. I was seeing my son again, just all sorts of stuff. And my days were going great, but then my mom would call and my day would go 
to crap. And I started to notice this pattern, right? Like, my day's going great. Anytime my mom calls me, it goes to crap, right? And I was like over a year sober. My mom was sober eight years at this time. And I ended up telling my mom, I said, mom, listen, I love you, okay? But right now, I need to work on some things before me and you can talk. I said, I need to take a break. So I didn't talk to my mom for a few months Why? while I worked on myself, all right? Now me and my mom have an amazing relationship. So the reason I share that as part of this story is sometimes you have to take a break and heal. Like sometimes, like I don't think I ever had the proper distance from her to fully heal. Like, it was a struggle to forgive, like all the stuff I was talking about with her childhood. Like it made sense, but it was hard because she was constantly in my face. But when I was able to just cut her out and just have my own kind of like space to process and deal with this, then it got better. Today, my mom and I are like best friends. Um, she calls me for advice, I call her for advice. She's a psychologist, she has a PhD in psychology. Um, she specializes in addiction, I mentioned this the other day. Our dream is to someday open a treatment center together and help people. Like my mom and I just, our relationship's amazing today and that's why I wanna give you some hope. But like, that hope is like, we, a lot of times we expect the other person to do all the all the work. We, we want the other person to grovel and apologize and forgive. Like, it's, my mom's coming up on 13 years sober. I'm six years sober. There are still people who hold my mom's addiction over her head, right? Like, I had to step back and realize, like, I have to put some work into this. I have to put some effort into this. Like, they cannot do all of the work. There's only so many times a person can say sorry. You know what I mean? But I actually get to go and uh, visit my mom this weekend as well as my father and a bunch of other friends and everything like that. But I really hope this video helped any of you out who had a rough childhood, if you have anybody in your life that you're struggling with forgiving. Again, I will repeat this one last time. Forgiveness is not letting the other person off the hook for what they did. Forgiveness is letting yourself off the hook so you can go to sleep at night, so you can move on with your day, all right? But anyways, um, this video is way longer than I expected. If any of you have any experiences that you wanna uh, share, or maybe if you wanna leave comments about how you're struggling to forgive people, maybe I can do a follow-up video about this, make sure you leave comments down below, all right? But that's all I got for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're new, I'm always making videos to try to help you out with your mental health. Make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell, and a huge, Thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You help me do something I love, which is help others with their mental and emotional well-being. And look, there's some new names on the Patreon list. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, just click or tap on that link right there. You can do it for as little as a dollar a month. All right, that's all I got for you. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.